Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam So continue on, we'll have a short uh, dars today about uh, related to usul of Latha, continuing on. And the Shaykh mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, the Surah Talatah is a book about the three questions we're going to be asked in the grave. Who remembers those three questions? Or at least one of them, huh? What are you going to be asked when you're in the grave? Who is Allah? Now, who is your Lord? Uh huh. What else? And who is your prophet? Naam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ah. And what's the last question? And what was your deen? What was your religion? Ascent. Naam. So this book is comprised about, it is made up of those principles. And about the importance of learning those principles and that every Muslim needs to know that. Every Muslim needs to know that. Needs to know that so that way they have knowledge of what, is, uh, of what their obligations are in this life as well as they are after. And continuing on, so we mentioned the verse, and we mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship, and we mentioned the ayah, the ayah, Ya ayyu al-nas, a'udhu rabbukum aladhi khalakukum waladhina min qablikum la'alakum tatakum, al-ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you mankind, so Allah is ordering all of mankind, worship your Lord, the one who created you, or who created you, and created those before you in order that you will be God-fearing. And we talked about taqwa before too in one of the other lessons about fearfulness, about fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it is uh, one aspect of taqwa is that you are staying away from the haram and doing the lawful thing. That taqwa, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means staying away from his, uh, the things he has prohibited that he says is haram and doing the things that he has ordered you to do. And that taqwa is what keeps between you, it's like a shield between you and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's in accordance with, I believe, the statement of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and some of the other companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then we reach to the point in the text where the Shaykh he said, he was talking about ibadah, or worship, and he said, so the Shaykh went on to say, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said that Ibadah, the important thing for us here is that Ibadah is of different types. Ibadah is, or, or worship is of different types. It doesn't mean just praying Salat. There's many different ways you can worship Allah. Did you know that? When you make Hajj, like we just said, that's worshiping Allah. When you fast, that's worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you listen to your mother for the sake of Allah, that is Ibadah. You get azure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you make dua, that is uh, something that will be rewarded to Allah, and that is worship. That is a form of worship. So the Sheikh showed us here that there are many different types of ibadah. He said the various types of, of worship which Allah has commanded, like, and he mentioned Islam in general. Islam in general is comprised of worship, it's comprised of uh, how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's an act of ibad, it is submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His commandments. And Iman, Iman in a very general way, is uh, comprised of ibad, and it's made up of worship. What Ihsan, as the Prophet sallallahu said, what Ihsan, doing good deeds or uh, goodness, which the Prophet sallallahu described in the Hadith of Jareel, what did he say? He said, in ta'budullaha ka'annaka so, Good. He said, in ta'budullaha ka'annaka tarah in lam tukum tarahu fa'innuhu yirah. So he said that ihsan is that you worship Allah as if 
you see him. And because you don't see Allah, know that he sees you. So that is what is called Ihsan. And that is the goodness that uh, is an act, that is a type of, uh, of worship. Because in, in fact, the definition of it, as the Prophet ﷺ describes it in the Hadith of Jibreel, is that it is to worship Allah as if you see him. So that means you have fear in your heart. That, you know, fear that maybe it's not going to be accepted. Or fear before your Lord, the one who created you. And you have hope for his mercy and his, 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 uh, his, yeah, his mercy and his rahmah for, for uh, his, his creation. And you have that humility before your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also supplication. Making dua is a type of ibadah. Supplication is ibadah. And the reason why, you know, we already know that, but we have to convey that to our brothers and sisters in Islam. Some people believe dua is not ibadah. Why? Because they do dua to dead people. And they say, they say, la ilaha illallah. It's true. Every, every Muslim country, except Saudi Arabia, you'll find that there are some people there who say la ilaha illallah, and they go to the graves, and they bring gifts to the dead in the grave. They slaughter sheep on the dead on the grave, and give that to try to seek blessings from that person. They pray uh, to that person as an intercessor, usually believing that they can help them or harm them. Some some people, some women, they say, "I can't have a baby. Please, Sheikh so and so, give me a baby." No. The sheikh can't do anything. He's dead. He couldn't even help himself. So du'a is ibadah. Du'a is worship. And du'a is only to Allah. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A du'a huwa ibadah. What did the Prophet say? A du'a huwa ibadah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said du'a, supplication, is worship. Okay? And khawf. There's different types of fear. Khawf. Khawf means fear. There's fear. If you saw a lion, would you be scared? I mean, it was close to you? A lion was close to you, you wouldn't be scared? You'd be scared. Okay. So if a lion was close to you, you'd be scared that he was going to eat you. You'd be really scared. That's okay. That's not be bad. That is the natural fear that you have as a human being. Or if you did something bad and you know you're going to get a spanking. That's a natural fear. Okay, that's okay. However, the fear of ibadah that only goes to Allah, that intense fear that's in the heart, that you're in the darkness and you know that no one can see you, whatever you're doing, but you stop doing it because you know Allah can see you. That is ibadah. That is the, the, the worship and that is the, the fear that, that is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rightfully deserving of being feared and worshipped subhanahu wa ta'ala and also this is hoping for Allah's mercy and tawakkul and relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone waragaba this is also a type of hope and fear waragaba is also a type of hope and fear and there's some difference and khushur khushur is when your heart you have a type of humility like when you're in salat very very important when you're in salat when you're doing your ibadah, try to have khushur. Khushur is when you're focused only on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't just make salat Allahu Akbar and you're looking this way and you're looking this way and you're looking up here and you're, you know, playing with your, you know, your hair, your shamach and your abaya and your khimar. The salat, you're worshipping Allah. This is your chance to communicate to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you should have your heart your heart should be connected to, you know, connected to your worship. That it should be humble and that you're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that you should fear and try to think of Allah and, and think of the ayats that you're reading. When you're reading the verses in the Quran, then try to reflect on that in your heart. Have that in your heart. And think about the meaning. And know that Allah is watching you. This will help you with your khushur, your focus and your concentration and your humility. And also, 
uh, inaba, you know, having toba, making toba in repentance and sorrow. This is also a type of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And relying only on Allah and depending upon Allah and seeking the help and refuge in, uh, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we slaughter sheep and slaughter animals we do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we do that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we eat and we give that meat out for gifts but we say Bismillah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Bismillah and we slaughter that animal for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, we're following the rights, Islamic rights, or Islamic uh, things that the Prophet has, le- has, has shown us that are legislated uh, acts of worship. And also when we swear, we only swear by Allah. We don't say, uh, you don't swear by your mother, you don't swear on your friend, you don't swear on the dead shit, you don't swear on this person, or the angels, but you swear only by Allah. And that shows us swearing is so serious that you should not take it lightly. You shouldn't say, well, why yeah, I did that? No, don't say that unless it's necessary. Some people, they say everything they do. Well, why yeah, I took that pencil? Well, why yeah, I put it there? Well, why yeah, I sat in the chair? Well, why? Yeah, well, why? Yeah. they just so easy. But that's dangerous. We shouldn't do that. We should be very careful. We always say, well, why yeah, if it's necessary? Only if it's necessary because that's serious. It's an act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are some of the types of worship and what it shows us, as the Sheikh says, here's what the Sheikh says, it's a beautiful statement. Qala Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala qal, wa ghayna dhalika min anwa'i ibadah alati amr allahu biha kullaha lillah. He said, and other than that, that there's, meaning that there's many different ways we worship Allah. He said, in other types of ibadah, there's many different ways we worship Allah, all of it, those things that Allah has commanded with, all of it is for Allah. All of it is for Allah. Whatever you do, try to make your intention that it's for Allah. That it's for Allah. Sometimes you make a mistake and you make a mistake with somebody. You take their right. Or you do something, even sometimes you might be wrong. Or I mean, you know, you... you or you might be right, I mean, you might be correct, but maybe that person misunderstands. So sometimes be humble for the sake of Allah and just say, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I didn't mean to do that. Or shake their hand. This helps the heart. Sometimes you might go in front of somebody by accident and then they, they say, you know, they get upset. And actually, I'll just tell you because this is a real example. Tonight, when I prayed Salat al Maghrib, we went to the masjid, and there was some of our brothers from one of the other countries, and he, they were getting close together because they called the ikama for salah. So the people were lining up, getting close, and I came up because I saw that there was enough room that I could fit in, so I moved in between him. And then the, they, they called the ikama, the imam started, takbir to ihram, he said, Allahu Akbar, so the man... He became upset. I, I came in in between them. I put my book down and I said, Allahu Akbar, with the email. And I noticed that even after that, he, he was very, he was kind of upset. He said, Stop for Allah. And then he joined the Salat. So after the Salat, I knew that this would make his heart feel better. That I didn't want him to think bad that, oh, this guy is just coming in and, you know, and, and you know, I wanted to set a better example. So, I tried to make my niyyah, and I'm just sharing this with you as a, for ta'lim, for teaching purpose, but I tried to make my niyyah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I shook his hand after the salat. After taslim, I shook his hand. And that makes the heart, it goes down. Sometimes uh, people get tension, but if you, if you sh- shake someone's hand, they cannot shake your hand, but they won't be as mad as they were before. They won't be as mad as they were before. So if someone is very angry with you, sometimes some people almost want to fight. But if you do something very nice to them, and he even wants to fight you, or she wants to fight you, or whatever, then if you do something really nice, it will. they can't do anything. They can th- push your hand out of the way, they can do this, but at the same time, it's still 
softened their heart a little bit. Because their intention, they wanted you to be angry too, so then you have two, you know, you have both of you being upset. But this is the beauty of Islam. And there's so many examples in the Sunnah because the Prophet said that you should give salams to those people you know and those people you don't know. And that shows that giving salam is ibadah. The Prophet ordered us with that. And you see that all the time that sometimes if someone is maybe they're maybe they're not, really not a very nice person. But if you give them salam, they're almost forced to at least greet you back. Even if they're upset, <laughs> they have a bad look on their face. <laughs> and then you say, Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So that, that forces them to at least takhfif a little bit. It makes their heart a little bit. A little bit. So that shows you the importance that ibadah and worship is of different ways that you can do ibadah. And when you do something for the sake of Allah, and it is in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu in accordance with the sharia, then that means it's bad. That means it's worship. Anything you do that's good, that it, it, it goes with the Quran and the Sunnah, then that's worship. You get worship. Hmm. Okay? Salat, Zakat, Hajj, Umrah, Tawakkul, you know, relying on Allah, Dua, uh, all of those things. Your heart, those, those, some of those acts of ibadah that I was talking about, Khashia, Khushur, uh, Rahaba, wa inaba, wa isti'ana, wa istighaza, wa isti'aza. All of those things had to do with the heart and tawakkul. You can't see tawakkul. You don't see tawakkul in someone's hands or it's not like this. But tawakkul ala Allah is something in the heart that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows if you're relying on Him in accordance with your intention. So those kind of, it shows us ibadah in worship of Allah is both in the heart, it's on the tongue, and it's where? In the heart, on the tongue, and on your limbs, in your actions. You can give someone one dollar, and that's worship, if it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you rely strictly on the law, that is worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of that is comprised, it shows us that iman, faith, is comprised of those three things. That you can't leave off deeds. You can't say, oh, I'm a believer, but then you don't do any good deeds. No. That's not true. Some people say that. They say, oh, you don't know what's in my heart. Some women, they don't wear hijab. And they say, oh, it's okay. You don't know what's in my heart. My heart is good. Your heart is not good. Their heart is not good. Because if their heart was good, then it would be in agreement with what Allah and His Messenger ordered. There's no way their heart could be good. Their heart has some stains on it. Why? Allah SWT says, Rana ala him. Be my candle, huh? Be my candle. Surah Al-Mutakhim. So, huh? Run out of Kulubim, be my candle, Yaksibun. So, now, so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions for us that they have filthiness on their heart for what they used to do, because the more, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained this uh, ayat, this verse, by saying the more that you do bad deeds then the more your heart becomes covered with a black stain. But if you do a good deed, like we talked about that other hadith, it helps to remove some of that black stain. So there's no way someone can say, oh, Iman is only in my heart. I don't have to do anything on my limbs. No. I don't have to say to Shahada, I'm really a believer. No. Those, that's false. That's not true at all. Someone who says that, they don't know much about Islam. They're, they're ignorant about Islam, in fact. And they should really study about Islam. Especially many people who are born Muslim and they take this, this belief. They don't, they don't know what they're talking about. This goes against the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma, the consensus of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah. And I ask Allah the Almighty accept our good and forgive our evil.